Hi peeps, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm just going to chat with you a little bit about various things, a coffee chat basically. So, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so now and hit the bell so you get notified when I have new videos out. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you would, because that sure helps. So. So welcome back. It is Saturday. It is September 19th. Um, and we have fresh air outside. I am so thrilled. The smoke has been blown away by the rain and the air quality is down from hazardous to good again. And I hope it stays that way. I really hope this is the beginning of our fall rainy season. I love the rain. It helps my MCAS, it helps my mood, the overcast skies help my mood, and it also cleared the wire, wildfire smoke from the air. Um, you would not believe how bad it was here. It was so bad you couldn't see the sun, and the sun would have been otherwise out in the sky. It was so bad, the sky was brown. You can still hear it <clears throat> in my throat. I've been using my inhaler several times a day, every day, just to keep somewhat of an even keel. It's had a lot of um, impact on my reactions. I've had a lot of reactions lately. And it's just been rough. It's been emotionally and um, physically rough for a lot of people so when the rain came in yesterday I was so grateful it was you know thank every rain god out there um, because it's uh, it's a real health hazard and I know those of you in the southeast probably are not thanking the rain gods right now it's almost as if it's two opposite spectrums you know but at least it's raining here still you know, we'll take the rain that that you don't need because we are used to rain here. The leaves are starting to turn. Uh, autumn is in the air. It starts on Tuesday, I believe, on the 22nd. And that is also a very special day for my personal ritual work. Um, I consider it Maliki's day. So I do special ritual for her. When the autumn hits here, we go into our rainy season and it feels natural. That's the season this area feels most at home in, is during the autumn. The mists rise. You never know what's waiting out there behind, you know, a fog bank. You know, trolls could be there or Maybe, maybe a goblin, or maybe your favorite hero or heroine from your favorite book, hiding in the mist, waiting, waiting for the monsters to come. You know, we get more serial killers here than most areas in the country, I believe studies have shown. And one of the theories is that we are so wooded and we have so many overcast days and gloomy days that it's easier for them to hide the bodies, and I would believe it. Um, the, when you go out in the forest here, the undergrowth is so thick that you are knee-deep in it, if not waist-deep. Um, you have huckleberry and brambles, you know, blackberries and salmon berries and skunk cabbage, which stinks in the, in the spring. And then, unfortunately, we also have stinging nettle, which I'm very, very allergic to. Um, so allergic that it put me in the hospital when I was 12. So I have to be careful going, wading around through the woods. I used to do a lot of it, and I was very lucky that I managed to avoid most of the stinging nettle. But now with my MCAS, I'd be afraid to. Um, so I go on the edges and go in the parks. Um, but yeah, the wild here is wild. It really is. And you can feel the energy of it surround you. Um, the call of the crows, the seagulls. We see hawks and eagles a lot here. 
and you know there are coyote and cougars out in the woods it's beautiful it's the only place i'd ever really want to live i think the only other place i would want to live is actually on the big island of hawaii which i fell in love with but the heat is too much for me and it would be hard getting the cats over there without subjecting them to quarantine anyway so um yeah I, I got off on a reverie but it's autumn it's autumn and i'm thrilled to see it and you know i love it so i do have an announcement um i am i am going to be as soon as i can removing my books from kindle unlimited I was really excited when I started it, but in just a few weeks, my income has plunged. And I realized that it's not a venue that's going to work for me. So if you haven't, if you are a KU reader and you haven't read the books that I have in there right now, um, if you want to get to them now so that you can, uh, because it's... It's not going to last much longer, and I won't be putting more in. And it's just business, you know. It is just the way things are and uh, the way things need to be. In terms of Blood Queen, I am writing. I, it is different again than... It reminds me most of the Indigo Court series, but it's not as dark, not quite as dark. It's more like a fairy tale, in a sense. And I'm really enjoying taking that turn. I've got a big surprise for you next year, but yeah, I'm not going to tell you yet, but you will find out about it in probably a few months. Um, so yeah, there are, there are more surprises next year. Uh, no, unfortunately it has nothing to do with Otherworld. I'm still struggling to get my rights back. Um, we'll see how that goes, you know. It's hard when you are fighting against a huge corporation. And that's what the publishers are. They're big corporations and they, you know, rightly for in terms of business are out for themselves. Um, unfortunately, the people who give them a reason to exist in the first place are pretty much shunted off to the side unless they are a massively huge best-selling author. But it is what it is and that's the way that's the way the model has been for all these years and they don't show any sign of changing which is why so many of us have gone indie in other news uh sam's birthday was yesterday and uh, i bought him flowers and coffee because he loves coffee and gave him a pretty card well a funny card actually and uh, that was, you know, I made some cookies. That was our celebration. That is our COVID birthday celebration. Maybon is coming up. Unfortunately, we won't be able to celebrate with friends and family. Um, so we will have a virtual celebration and just, you know, acknowledge the harvest. And uh, this is the second harvest, the harvest of fruits. And so we will make a donation to the food bank again and just uh, quietly watch it, you know, pass. And then I will be decorating for the second phase of autumn. See, I decorate for autumn in several phases. The first phase is the Lugnasaw phase with the sunflowers, you know, around the first harvest, which is August 1st. And that's a mild decoration because for spring and summer, I don't keep many decorations up, except my seasonal fairies and teapots and a few few garlands. Um, but autumn, the first autumn, first phase of autumn, first harvest, August 1st, I come out with the Lugnasaw decorations. And then the 1st of September, we put up the second harvest decorations which are the autumn ones, the harvest ones, but they're not the Samhain ones. They're not the Halloween decorations yet. And then around the 1st of October, those come out and stay up for the month. And then they actually, 
we go back at the 1st of November after Samhain is done. We go back to the second phase of autumn, basically take down the um, Samhain decorations, but leave up the first and second harvest decorations. And by way, by, <laughs> and by the way, uh, Samhain is the third harvest. It's the harvest of meat. It's the harvest of blood. And it's the festival with the ancestors. So, yeah, at the 1st of November, we take down the Samhain decorations, leave up the harvest decorations, and then the week before Thanksgiving, it's time to decorate for Yule. And, you know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's too early, but you know what? If you love it, it's not too early. And it's my house, and it's not too early here. So, you know, we we decorate that week all week long. Um, get the trees up and get the garlands up and the outside decorations up. I really fully intend someday to be the house that you can see from outer space. <laughs> I love lights. I love the sparkle of lights. Oh, and the only other thing that I can think to tell you is my massively bad, exciting moments the past couple of weeks. You know we have spider season. Occasionally I put pictures up of the giant European house spiders that we have here. Now, I don't care how many people say, they're really good, they help eat the bugs. Yes, they do. They do. I acknowledge that. I acknowledge that they're helpful. I am still an arachnophobic person. I am an arachnophobe. If they're tiny, tiny spiders, like very little, I don't want them on me, but I won't scream. You know, I'll, I'll take care of them. I just, I get rid of them because they grow up to be big spiders. But these, these freaking spiders we get here can have a leg span up to five inches. And I am not joking. I went in the bedroom about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, I think. And, okay, I was going in to get ready for bed, and I got ready for bed, set up my iPad, and I went to the bathroom, in the bedroom bathroom, in our ensuite. And when I came out, I turned around, and I looked right above the bathroom door, and there was one of those huge black, brown, European house spiders, which... They look like a mini tarantula, kind of, only they're a bit jointier than that. Um, they don't have fur. They're not like a wolf spider. And, oh man, I, I screamed, of course. Sam knew what that scream means. He, he jokingly refers to my spider scream, but he's very, very good at taking my fears seriously. And uh, he came in and got the spider. And... I was just paranoid. It was just, it threw me into a reaction. The adrenaline rush can throw me into a reaction. So, a few nights later, I go back into the bedroom. I look up. There's nothing on the ceiling. I get, you know, lay on the bed with my iPad. I look over at the wall, which luckily is not right next to me. And there's another one on the wall. It was harder to see because it was a dark green wall. So, yeah, that threw me into a reaction too. Sam came in, he got the spider. When you can hear it crunching, you know there's an issue. And then, not long after that, I was at my desk like a week ago, and I'm sitting here, and I happen to glance over at the wall, and I see one of those giant freaking spiders there. And of course I scream. And I'm looking around for the fly swatter because I'll be damned if I can sit at my desk while it's there. It drops onto my desk. My desk is black. It starts running around on my desk. I can't see it. Sam comes in. He can't find it. By then it's crawled behind the desk somewhere. I could not bring myself to sit at my desk. I had to go in the bedroom and work on my iPad Luckily, a very dear friend, um, I texted him, and he came over the next day. 
we wore masks, all that good, you know, everything good. He went through my entire office. Well, the spider seemed to have disappeared out of my office, but he found some webs and a couple others that he took care of, and uh, I was very grateful. And then another friend of mine came up last week, and we went through every drawer, every shelf, and she cleaned every part of my office. Um, I, and I took the time to go through every drawer, get rid of a whole bunch of junk, go through every shelf, get rid of a whole bunch of junk. I got rid of over half of my books about writing because a few I wanted on Kindle, a few I haven't touched in 10 years. And if I haven't read them in the past 10 years, I'm not going to. So I got rid of half the books in my office and a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't use and that I wasn't going to use. And, oh, just, you know, it felt so nice afterwards. And it's so much more organized. Um, I still have a few things to do in here. But we decided that she's going to come up every couple months and just go through my office, you know, it'll help a keep me from panicking about is there a spider behind, you know, making a nest behind my desk or is there a spider behind there or whatnot. Because honestly, I'm 59 years old. I have done everything I can to try and calm this phobia down. It's to the point now where I can see a little spider and while I don't like it, I don't totally panic. You know, as long as I can take care of it and make sure it doesn't grow into a big spider in here. Um, but it's not going to go away. And from what I understand, and I've done research on it now, the fear of spiders and snakes is somewhat genetically implanted. And it's a self-preservation thing from when we lived in the wild and we had those dangers at a hand. Um, not to mention the fact that I grew up in Black Widow com country. Now, it's interesting because I'm not afraid of snakes. I grew up um, in rattlesnake country too, but I've never had that same fear of snakes. I'm cautious around them, but I like them. I'm even tattooed, you know, with them. Um, but snakes don't trigger that same fight or flight response in me. I respect them. And I think they're beautiful, and I love, love watching documentaries about them. But yeah, um, not so much the spiders. So that was my, my excitement for the past week or so has been eight-legged and not fun excitement. So I'm hoping for more happy, exciting things, um, or even just happy, boring things. Actually... Considering what 2020 has been, I will take happy and boring any day at this point. I've had a lot of excitement in my life, and uh, yeah, I, I don't mind the concept of maybe having a little bit of just nice, average, non-adventurous non days. I've done a lot of adventuring, and maybe at some point I'll be happy to go adventuring again, but right now... We could use a little bit of just calmness. Samhain is on a full moon this year, I believe. And it's also, I think it's a blue moon. The veils are going to be very thin and a lot of people have crossed over because of the pandemic. So, you know, it's going to be an active spiritual season as well. Keep an eye out. You know, I think we're going to be seeing a lot of ghostly activity. Other than that, I will be having my autumn contest in October at some point. I don't remember the exact date. It'll keep watch on my blog for it. It's going to be a really nice basket again, along with a Kindle Fire. So I'm going to keep it short. That's it. Have a wonderful weekend. Sam and I will be coming to you this week, I believe, with a new disability video. And we're going to be talking about 
ways, you know, life hacks for being disabled, you know, things that we personally have adapted to make life easier on us. Um, so I will talk to you later. I will see you next week. I will be talking about the intuitive writer again and how I use music um, and a few other things to fuel that intuitive process. So have a great week. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Are you ready for witching time? It's coming out in just a couple weeks, just a few, well, three, four, but it's coming out soon. And uh, remember, Autumn Spain is out there on the shelves. And I will talk to you next week.